see two things. First, I see somebody on here in the panelist thing. Um, somebody said, I offered to help pay all her child support. Well, here, and they're saying, oh, I know all about her case. I guarantee you they don't. But let me explain something to you. If When there's people who contacted me and they were deceived into contributing to John Gentry's bonding out of Neely, mm -hmm. John Gentry's raising the $10,000. And then by deceived, here's what I mean. Gentry led everybody to believe, he even did it, and we'll go over it in a minute, in his remonstrance, his foolishness, that this was an unlawful arrest. It should never have happened. You do know we can see you there, right, Melissa? You look like you're smoking in a bar or something, I just want to tell you. Anyway, um, I don't know why, but, uh, it, it, but here's one thing I want to point out. Number one, it's highly... It's highly, and, and he says, Chris showed it to me. Plus, you can look at it on the court. Do you no, want there's me, some stuff. Do you want me to allow wait, them oh, to talk? No, on, I'm asking, on. do you want me to allow them to talk? Yeah, let's bring them in, and let's, let me question them a minute, because let me okay. explain something. Before you do, whoa, whoa, whoa. Before you do, let me explain something, folks. Here's what happens whenever you put up a bond. And for the people that put that bond up, they think they're going to get that bond back. Now, they may or may not. And there's a difference between paying a bondsman. You never get that 10% in the fee back. Right, but whenever, right. you, whenever you put up a $10,000 bond and you show up for court, you're going to get your money back. Typically. What is that? You need to mute somebody or do something, Maria. I don't know if you've already turned it on, but I can't. I can't hear it. They're riding a horse or something. <laughs> Maria. Somebody got to mute. But I, everybody's muted except for you two. Who's you two? Uh, who who is it the the one that said that you um offered to pay all your the child support and Chris showed who what's your name? Can you That's tell me? Us? Paul knows. Ron knows. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I'm okay. going to mute myself and let you two talk. Okay, just make sure there's not a bunch of noise that kills my ear with these headphones on, brother. But I talked to you earlier. I sent you a thing asking you to come in. And I know you think you know. And no, you just, say you know I mean, everything about Neely's case, right? I've been looking at her whole case. Okay. And you know, and how do you know that? Well, because you can go online to look at any court case. Can you? Well, yeah, you can look at the dockets and this is a closed case, which is McKenzie's is a closed I, I case. Tell you, I tell you what I'll do. And I'll bet you $10,000 of my money against 100 of yours, you can't pull mine up online and you can't pull Melissa's up online and you can't pull uh, anybody's up online. You can pull up some arrests, but you you can't pull up. Huh? Hold on a second. Well, I mean, it's, John Gentry is the one that showed me how to do this, so I mean. No, oh, you're fucked to start with. Let me just tell you well, about Gentry, number one. I know about Gentry. I know about Gentry. Well, you're telling me that that is your man that's taught you something about the mm -hmm. law, and he's filed. Let me ask you this. What was Gentry's case about, since you were good at pulling it up? What was Gentry's, what, in other words, the case that Gentry did that got mm -hmm. him into all of this, and he's doing all these grievances, and he's doing everything to heal the nation. What was it? What is was Gentry's monster? case? Yeah, what was his case? What was his case about? I'm not. I don't know anything about John's. I mean, I know off in Tennessee here, he's actually you know reformed a lot of stuff. But the he's reformed. Court, he's reformed a lot of stuff. Did you say? Yeah. Well, the federal court told him to go to the Supreme Court because it had to be Wait, done. Wait, can That's, I just ask what is he reformed? Yeah. Well, the way I understand it, it was the Chancery Court that he redone. He redone the chancellery court. Okay, let me just say this right here, okay? You realize that John lost in the lower federal court, and he lost due to a certain judge that wrote the order. And whenever that judge wrote the order the first time, John came back, and he's going to take it to the Supreme Court. It got shut down, but then he was going to do a remonstrance. But you understand, and let me give you a little bit of history, because you say you can find all this online, so I'm going to educate you some. And that's not anything bad, but the judge who shot John Gentry down in mm -hmm. his own case in federal court was a judge by the name of Brent Kavanaugh. Do you know who that is? 
Yes, sir. I know about every judge in the state of Tennessee, especially. Okay, since my tell in tell Virginia. everybody listening who Brent Kavanaugh is. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I did. I'm not catching. What, what, I, no, I was saying, anything. would you tell mm -hmm. everyone who Brent Kavanaugh is and why he's important, especially right now? Well, I believe he's the one. I believe he's the one that's doing like some kind of case or something. I seen that. I don't think. Let me make sure I get all my my stuff right, man. Uh, yeah, he's that. Well, most judges are doing some kind of case or something. But why is Brett Kavanaugh very important? And where should people have heard of him? Probably federal. Federal. He board. was. He was federal. He's not anymore. Do you know what happened to him? No, I don't know what happened to him. What happened to him? What happened to him? It was probably one of the worst nightmares you ever watched in Senate confirmation hearings in a long time. As a matter of fact, every Democrat on the U.S. Senate committee to to put appoint Supreme Court justices. You see, Donald Trump appointed him to the Supreme Court, and he is there right now. He's about to overview a bunch of stuff. But what do you think the odds are that John Gentry files his goofy stuff in federal court and the same judge? is going to be sitting on the Supreme Court after he already ruled and shot it down there. But what more importantly, and he did, and the Supreme Court failed, would not hear it, would not hear it, much like Neely's case, did right. not hear. It. But uh, here's my point. Do you even know why John Gentry, what his case was? Not that he filed a remonstrance, but what, what was John Gentry mad about? Why wasn't he happy hmm. with a court order? I do believe that was because of my cousin at the time was Speaker of the House, Glenn Cassidy, and it was against him and a couple other, you know, politicians. And what was he against them about? That I can't remember. Well, here, but, I'm going to go ahead and but, refresh your memory on it. But he did not, uh, but he did not have Glenn Cassidy, you know, it, it, his... His uh, lawsuit, whatever, didn't have nothing to do with Glenn Cassidy stepping down because Glenn Cassidy couldn't hold office at the time because he owns a big pharmaceutical uh, right. company in Crossville, Tennessee. Right. But John Gentry's complaint, what was his complaint? I, don't, I, I can't even remember his now. I mean, that's months ago. Okay, if I told you, and I'm going to ask you because, see, I believe you need to know those who labor amongst you. And if you're going to put your life in somebody's hands or the fact that whether they get their kids back or they get out of jail, if I'm going to deal with Gentry and he's going to get my rear end out of jail, I'm going to know about Gentry or I'm not dealing with him. And I'm not right. going to send him $10,000 worth of donations if I don't even know what he's done. I'm not. But Gentry's problem was Gentry was married. He didn't have a family court case. He didn't have any sort of child case, custody case, or otherwise. Gentry was mad because in the divorce, his wife didn't have right. to pay him alimony. No. That's his beef. That's his beef. Did he tell you Also, that? he was not awarded the business she started before they got right. married. Right. Now, somebody else told me that. Yeah, because she liked to cook and she invented a thing that never did get patented. But the main thing, Maria, wasn't that. Gentry stuff revolves around he didn't get he didn't get alimony from his wife. Well, he didn't did get alimony. Wanted? He didn't he want I think he wanted her business to support him and her to support him. Well, but it, it okay. Makes the sense. problem here is what I'm trying to tell you is, brother, you don't know what we know, but the illusion has happened, and, mm -hmm. and your comment was, Halleck showed me everything. Gentry showed me everything. And here's, here's the thing. You see, if I tell you everything I know, and you put it with everything you know, then mm -hmm. you'll know more than I know. But when you're looking at someone like Gentry, Gentry doesn't know. He doesn't know. If he did know, are you telling me? that you knew all of this stuff about Neely and you were still supporting her? 
Because we're about to bring out some stuff that no mother in their right mind would let Neely babysit a child once they see it. And I'm just telling you in advance, but I want to get you on the record that you already know and that there's nothing we can bring out you don't know. Because once we do, you're going to look, you're going to look bad. And I'm just being honest because we put it where it is. You know, I, I completely understand. But I mean, you know, I follow God and John 3, 16. Everybody has sins. Everybody can be forgiven. Yes, yeah, but and, and let me... with forgiveness is that you would, when you when you confess and you ask the Lord for forgiveness. I'm not going you, there, Maria. Stop. Sin. I'm not going there. We're not going <laughs> theological. We're not going religion. We're not, not going theological. in the weeds. No, it's not it theological. Is. Okay, and then, okay. Believe me, Maria. Let me handle this one. All right. yeah, I have a let question. Hey. Randy, I have a question for him, sure. please. He stated that he could see everything because Gentry told him how to. Um, my question to you is, how can you see everything when juvenile cases are sealed? Well, he was showing me some kind of case because uh, I know mine, I, I can see my case when I pull it up. Right, but these dependency cases, like many that Neely were involved in, they're sealed. You understand yeah. that, don't you? Yes, I know. So the, these, I know the. I know the. Okay. Uh, her her so case unless, is sealed. Unless she shows it and she volunteers it, even Hallett and all these people never saw mm -hmm. it. So what kind of question? What kind of case do you have? Mine, mine, mine was messed up because <laughs> because of John and Chris and everybody kept telling me you're filing this court and it was the wrong court and I had to go to the state attorney and say hey man why is this not working he said you filed it in the wrong court there buddy it goes but to is this it a family case. court case this is a criminal case what mine turned into a criminal case okay that's all the questions I had okay go ahead Randy and then I have wait I have one more you didn't realize that Brent Kavanaugh was our, a Supreme Court justice I don't keep up with like everybody. Okay, did, did really you don't. know that Gentry, the reason, and he blamed the clerk's office for the United States Supreme Court, him and Kirk Pendergrass went to Washington, did it all on a live video, blaming the clerk because their case got denied. And I, I still don't think there was anybody in the room besides them. <laughs> I mean, be honest. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I mean, there's a lot of these Facebook groupies, you know, they go up to D.C., say they're doing this, you know, thing in front of, you know, Congress or something, and there's nobody but them in there. <laughs> okay, so are you calling them liars? No, I'm just saying they're miss, what do you call that, where you squirrel, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, well, that's exactly our point here, sir, which would be they're making an illusion right, to people right. on social media that there's something they're not. Right, exactly right. I agree with you, 100%. I do okay. have one other question. Do you believe that Mr. Gentry, in your opinion, is practicing law without a license? Well, where do you have to have license at anywhere in the United States Constitution? There's the problem. I mean, there's nowhere. I mean, even even my state, Tennessee, you know, they even tell me, hey, you practice law. Well, you then want. I guess then we should allow the people to practice medicine without a license because it's not in the Constitution, right? No, I'd like to address well, that. I, you can I, represent I, 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 yourself. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. See, I'll, lawfully, I'll, I'll, let me speak. You can sorry, lawfully, you can lawfully represent yourself, but when you go out and you prepare pleadings, if you were to put your name on a notice of appearance right. in a case, right with a fake bar number from the state of Florida like Hallett was doing, that is mm -hmm. practicing law without a license. Thank you okay. for that, Karen. Okay. Okay, but, can I get in here but, for a minute real but, quick? Just real quick. I want to. I just want to go through a couple of things here where I was uh, got off track. Um, and brother, I appreciate you being on here. It's not, it, this is awful. I know you had a mm -hmm. heart for this girl and I know you have believed in you believed in what these people have told you. There is no doubt. But I, I want to go over two things real quick. Well, three. And and as far as a license, you're a truck driver. You got a CDL. You're not going to tell them if they stop you. You don't have a CD. You don't have to have a CDL because it's not in the Constitution. And what they're showing you, by the way, you got to have a CDL. Yeah, but why? 
I mean, you I, was have one? I was five years old driving my granddad's truck across the farm. We was yeah, but you won't be you won't be driving that one you're driving now on the highway unless you got one. That's because it's a yes, state law. law. That's because it's a state law. Federal law. No, that's, right. a, that's a federal, federal best, law. It, it's that's to protect the best law. interest of the public to make sure that people are not doing things they're not qualified to do and damage the people. Now, and let's bring this to your attention, and, and I respect you for being here too. But yes, do you know that that attorneys that you know attorneys we have ethical standards we have to go by. Right. Right. And right. so there are things we can't do, such as have sex with our clients, right. blackmail our business. clients, um, put our clients in harm's way, right. tell our clients to do something that will hurt them. Why do you think right. that is? Because it's conflict of interest. And it's, you know, well, it's not conflict of interest. It's because the same as medical licensing and CDL licensing, it is the best public interest standard. We can't have people that are not trained and hurting people, just like a CDL, somebody that's not licensed, that's out on the highway, that's doing things that, that they should not be doing. No different than Christopher Hallett practicing law without a license and messing with Neely's head for all these years. I see the direction okay. you're going with this. Okay, yeah, but let I me, just, can I... Can I, are y'all, let me know whenever I can. Are y'all ready? I got to get to these questions with this. Yeah, dog. let's move, we can. No, I got to, or, or, yeah, or I'm not saying, do let's it. Go ahead. Go okay, ahead. brother, uh, believe me, I understand everything here, but whenever I want to go over something and just kind of, and I want to educate other people that are out there so they understand. But when we met Neely down in Georgia at Senator Nancy Schaefer's rally or memorial, we sat in a car with Neely and she was very proud of something. And that was, that was bindings. And these were legal bindings that go into federal court. They were prepared by Christopher Hallett. Uh, do you know what bindings are? Did I lose Paul? No, I'm still here. No, I'm still what, here. Do you know what I mean, legal bindings to go into federal court are? I ain't got them license, remember? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, here, here's the thing. In these bindings, what it was, is there are a special way that everything has to be done when it's going to go into a federal court. And Neely was excited because Hallett had prepared them. And at the end of it, I'm reading it, and I had never seen it. I just met her. I've never dealt with Hallett. This is 2018, March. And I look, I get to the end. And here's a fascinating thing. He claimed to have a bar number. Did you know that Chris Hallett claimed to have a bar number? Well, maybe he had some kind of leak. If he had some kind of document, it had to have a, you know, so, uh, bar. Uh, no, nah, I mean, no, nah, I mean, that, that, that throws like everything for a loop because, you know, I didn't. None of them's got bar numbers. Okay. Well, here's here's what I'm going to do. He, he would claim that he was giving it under a fiduciary relationship agreement. And what that means is if you're a stockbroker, I was. Right. Whenever you're a stockbroker, you have that relationship. It's a trust relationship. Right. If you're an attorney, you have that. But Chris right. Hallett would claim that he had that specific relationship as a real estate person or a person licensed, okay, licensed by the state of Florida to do real estate. And because of that fiduciary relationship, it gave him a right to practice law. Now, I want you to think about that. If you just think there for a minute, and this is what went on top of it. Do you know what E clause, and it's E clause, do you know what the E stands for? in E clause. Idiot. <laughs> that would be close, but no. E stands for emoluments. It is yeah, the emolument clause. But 
what is an emolument clause? Do you know what that even means? Because it's coming up right now. It's going to come up more with Biden and Trump. And it really pertains to exactly what happened in the Ukraine, the mayor from Russia, the China situation and Hunter Biden. And it comes down to what? You know what? That what the basis of Chris's loss protection E clause under the emolument clause was? No. Well, a monument simply means if I'm if I'm a U.S. senator, then I can't use my committee status or anything else I'm doing, my power in the U.S. Congress, or if I'm a judge. It doesn't matter if I'm if I'm a member of the U.S. government, I can't go out and benefit and profit by getting things from other countries who I have leverage over or they're a special interest group. In other words, if you're a senator from where you are right now, mm -hmm. has lobbyists coming into his office and th what they'll do is they'll give them some free ballet ticket, the Kennedy Center and everywhere else. But if they get any gift over X number of dollars, that's considered an emolument. And you can't do that. But Chris right. Hallett, just so you understand how Chris Hallett was telling people, and I told Neely then that no, simply because he had a fiduciary relationship as a realtor or a real estate person, that does not give you a bar. That does right. not give you a right to practice in yeah. a bar. And those bindings that he did, they went into federal court and they got shot down. Then he went into, and we're going to go over a list of these in just a moment, but John Gentry did the same thing. He bought a special copier because the margin, the size of the paper, the way the words are, the, the very rhetoric used in the way they form their sentences and how many how many verbs and adverbs can be all of this plays a part when it goes into the supreme court and do you do you understand what a petitionary discretion is when it comes to or a pdr as they would call it or a PDF. discretionary review is i know what a pdf is not a PDF, a PDR or discretionary review. When it comes to the Supreme Court, do they have to hear a case? No. No, I don't believe no. so. No, it's discretionary. And if it doesn't serve the public interest, then it doesn't even get there. Gentry's never got there. Hallett's never got there. Right. Then Hallett was telling people that he was filing their cases into Congress. You understand you can go in there and find a book called Pinocchio or The Man in the Sea in the Library of Congress because you file something in the Library of Congress means absolutely nothing. Right. Nothing. Right. And, but he was telling me, and, and here it gets down to the point of it, brother, and I'm just telling you, Neely, we're going to show that she had issues, but we're also, you're going to see the other side and you're going to be a little bit happier over there because we're going to show you where these bastards pushed her over the edge. We're going to show you where sexually, mentally, physically, and every other way, they psychologically pushed an already fragile, vulnerable person who everybody knew had had issues for a long time. They kept dangling one thing after the next, after the next, and like Chinese water torture, yeah. she finally couldn't handle it anymore. But you're also going to see another thing. Paul, and you're going to see where, you, you, let me just tell you something, you may not even know this, but last year Neely had called me and she said, you were right, I don't want to deal with them anymore, they're destroying me Randy and I want you to help and I'm sorry for what happened and I want to make things right and I said Neely, if you shit can them I will help you, she said will you look at everything, I said I got a couple hours, I'll go over it with you, I don't want to see your paperwork, I want to just talk to you and ask some questions and I did. And what I found, you know, they're filing all this other crazy stuff that's going nowhere and frustrating courts and everything. What I found was an interesting thing, and that is that Neely's new husband, the young guy, he is listed on the birth certificates as being the biological father. He's not. But when he's listed on that birth certificate, do you understand that's a big deal for those twins if he's listed at the birth certificate, Paul? I told her, all you got to do, Neely, is cut the other crap, have him walk into a courtroom, paternity has been established, and I can see no reason why there's not DSS involvement. All there is, 
is her mother has the children. A father comes before a grandmother, especially when he's not listed as a respondent in any case, anywhere. And you know what she said? I will. I'll, 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 I'll do that. I'll do this. I'll do the other. I'll, I'll blah, blah, blah. And you know what? I never heard back from her again. And that's a sad thing because she didn't have to go down this path, but brother, they kept doing kind of crazy stuff and it, Kirk Pendergrass is all down there sleeping with her. She got a husband overseas. You got Gentry messing with her. You got Hallett messing with her. You, you've got all these places she's been. And then she was already predisposed to make bad decisions and bad judgments. But God, who, who, what, what person can handle a situation like this normally? But look at everything she had hanging over her head. She was constantly in and out of court. And then they, they absolutely, you know, I like you, Paul, but if you started to like me so much, you got a rev it up license plate, rev it up shirts, you got rev it up agent all over your stuff and you're handing out rev it up business cards. You see, there's a difference between Neely being taken in by a company and the mm -hmm. fact that she was actually an agent of that company. Right. She was an agent right. of the company. Right. She participated in her own nightmare. And apparently she liked it. And then I don't think we've had the whole story either, by the way. There's something that doesn't fit with the story. And we don't have a true affidavit from that night, a witness one. We have an affiant that's telling what somebody else told. But I, there's a lot that doesn't add up from that night. I don't know. I don't know if she went there, spent the weekend, had, you know, mm -hmm. pasta and meat sauce the night before and decided to kill a bunch of people. But it doesn't. It doesn't fit what I know about Neely. She may not have been, you know, she may have been promiscuous and made bad decisions, but I didn't see her as a killer killer. Mm. But we did predict that sooner or later they would push people like that over the edge and they would come and take them out. But these guys, Chris Hallett got burned in the fire that he started. He did. And that that's kind of where we're headed with the next part of this thing. But I, I don't, I, I know that I see that you're raising money for, an attorney and and it was like seventeen thousand dollars and if some, if they'll come up with eighty five hundred dollars then you'll help come up with the rest of the money or the other half but brother that's going to be a drop in the bucket that won't buy you one expert witness for an hour in a courtroom now i'm just telling you how it is that that we had a legal suit and we had a phd a dirt doctor if you will soil scientist and he did some outside work, but then when he came to court, it was one hour of testimony and the total bill was $15,600. These are not easy issues and they're very expensive. And Neely is up against a nightmare, likely not to be bonded out for a long time, if ever, and could be facing capital murder if she pre predid it. But here's what I wanted to ask you while I got you here. And I'd ask you in the, in the thing, there's so many people out here and brother, they're putting out their line. There's women that are saying, you know, they were called by this one and that one. They were, one of them said she was called by Tannis and Tannis told her what happened. And after doing that, she then in turn contacted Neely and Neely had told her to get a uh, recorder and record her confession or testimony. And then it was out there that you had talked to her. And you had recorded her testimony. And then it was a little mm -hmm. screenshot of your, I guess, your cell phone bill and 908, which would be eight minutes after the thing where you had tried to call her. But you're telling me you tried to call her. You didn't get her. You didn't mm -hmm. talk to her that night and you did not record her. Is that right? Yes, I didn't never. Yes, I never recorded her. And the last time I talked to tried to talk to her was like at six I think it's the, if I remember right, it was 652. And I called her through Duo. And the phone was laying on her lap. She had a stack of papers on her lap. And she was sitting there trying to talk, I guess, to Chris. And she sounded like Carmen from South Park. <laughs> and I posted, you know, as soon as the phone cut off, I posted it on Facebook, you know. Yeah. And I didn't hear nothing else the rest of the night. Was she trying to talk to Chris in person at 652? Yes. Okay. Yes. So she, she was already there. Had she been there all weekend 
I mean, that's how it looks, but I don't know. No. 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 So she got mm -hmm. there that night. I know, uh, let's see, Friday night, she's at a motel. Saturday, I believe she went over there, but I don't think she stayed. I think she went back to the motel. Because, like, I can show you all my phone records. I can show anybody my phone records, and we talk through duo. Right. No, I don't think you got anything that, to hide at all, brother. And you were honest with me, and I invited the other ones who claimed they had the recordings. I invited them to come on. I invited them to tell their truths because they're running around, they're telling stuff, and I could notice they're lying to you. And and I could notice from the things you've written, you cared about the girl. You really did. I mean, I mean, it's genuine. These people did not. And I, and I don't honestly trust any of them. I don't think yeah. you should. But your understanding is you talk to her at 6.52 at night and she's over there. And then you don't know anything else until when. When do you find out that she has or, or that Chris has been shot and allegedly she did it? It was late. It was later. It was after nine because I called like three or four times. I believe I tried to call back. Never could get a hold of her. Then finally her phone just went, you know, I guess she blocked it or cut it off or something, you know, for me calling. Right. And then somebody called me and then they were, you know, somebody called me and they were telling me, they're like, hey, um, got something to tell you. And I was like, hold on a minute. Robert's calling me. And then Robert called and he's like, man, you just posted, you know, the twins picture and uh, Mackenzie on Facebook in the Bible. I was like, yeah, that's the pictures Neely's been wanting to see for a while. And she's like, he's like, well, when did you get them? I was like, back in 2018 when Neely, you know, when me and Neely first started hanging out, she gave me them pictures and I told her I was going to put them on the Bible, you know, with the rest of my pictures and people I pray for at church. Right. And then I let her go or let him go and took the phone call back from the person that called me and they were like, um, I got bad news. And they're like, and I'm like, what bad news? And they're like, Neely just shot Chris. I said, what? No, Chris loved Neely. Neely loves Chris. What happened? Wow. And when you say Robert, who's Robert? That was, that's, that's Neely's should be ex-husband now. She oh, okay. Did, she did file a uh, annulment. Annulment is what she filed. Right. Brady, wow. I have a question for the caller. Where does where does Robert live? On the base, Pensacola. Oh, he stays on base on Pensacola. Okay. Yes. Sir. Good gracious! Brady, I, I know that this right here, right just now, just give me one more minute here. Okay. So uh, you get a call from them, and then the other person tells you this has happened, but Robert had no idea this had happened, right? I have not a clue because he never mentioned anything about it. He just asked me where did I get the pictures at? I posted on Facebook. Did you know of any problems between uh, Chris or uh, Chris and and her or uh, Chris and Neely or Chris and Kirk? Uh, I, between her and Chris, no. I mean. Like I've said, uh, you know, everybody knows they, they, you know, buddy, buddy. But I do know, you know, within the last three months, she was getting mad at Crit, uh, Kirk because Kirk was deleting people off the YouTube. Like every time they, you know, make a comment or something, if Kirk didn't like it, he deleted it off. He, you know, he wouldn't even listen to their comments. He just deleted it off. And she was like, why does he keep doing that to everybody? Do you know if she had any contact with Kirk right before she got there and this all happened? No. No, I don't know. I don't know that. Were you aware that at some times Kirk and Chris actually argued on the show and Kirk wanted to continue down the path of representing Neely, but Chris wanted to be done with her and kick her to the curb? No, I don't know none of that neither. I don't know none of that neither. I just know Chris and Kurt, you know, they had their issues. Right. Uh, I mean, I, 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 didn't, I didn't stay on the show. I've been off the show now for a couple of 
maybe a month. And I was only on it then for like two months because I got off. I was on it once before for two years. And then I got off because like, I don't know, just, I, I agree with you too much right now. <laughs> Being honest. <laughs> well, let me ask you something. Did you, were you aware that, uh, you know, Neely had had sex with Kirk and Hallett? Hallett, no. Hallett, no. But Kirk, yes. Did you know Kirk uh, also used to have a sexual relationship with Shannon? <laughs> no, but that's what a bunch of people have been telling me. And now Robert just messaged me and told me to get off the show. <laughs> I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. Robert may not like this. Robert might be involved in this now that we know he's down there on base in Pensacola. That would explain a lot of different things we were looking for. Yeah. Did you, um, whenever it comes to Shannon, uh, it, it look, she hated Kirk. We've seen it. We've read it. Do you mm. have any idea why she despised Kirk so badly? No, I, I don't. I don't get it off in people's business. Right. I just didn't know if you had personally seen it. I don't think you've really. I don't think you've actually been down in there as much as some of the people that they are not even involved that have been in there. Some of us been all in people's business that it's none of our business. So Robert called and wanted you or messaged and wanted you to get off the show. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of bad. You know, and I know, and most of us know, before this is over with, this whole situation is going to be on ID Channel. It's going to be on Lifetime Network. Is a movie, a book. It's got everything in the world to draw people in. And our hope is that it does two things, brother. That it, number one, draws attention mm -hmm. like never before to family court and what happens and how it destroys people's lives, how it pits them against each other, how it forever changes people. And then sometimes they commit suicide. They kill the other person. They do things they wouldn't do normally. They do drugs. They do alcohol. They wouldn't do. They have sex mm -hmm. with people they don't like. And they do crazy things in courtrooms that they would never have thought of before. And I hope that if nothing else, this raises awareness so that we can stop what happens in these family courts. It doesn't happen in every family court. It doesn't happen with every attorney or GAL, but it happens a lot. It happens more than it should. But I, you know, I appreciate everything and your, your honesty and your candor is absolutely amazing. I got to tell you, I like uh, you. I, I could be buddies with you, go fishing, do whatever, because I I like the fact that you're just you're you. Yeah. I'm telling you, Ronnie, you're just you. Um, and I think you're caught up in a bad situation that that should have never happened. And I don't think any of us really know yet what really happened until right. you know there's more stuff that goes on, but. I'll, let, I'll leave that for a minute. I'm going to write some notes down while Melissa asks you what she has. I have a question for him, if I may. Yes, ma'am. Uh, to the caller. Um, do you know if Neely, how she possibly got her hands on a gun? No. Because that is a big question, because I'm yeah. sure you're aware of the... That's what I've been asking. Here in Kentucky. Yeah, that's the same thing I've been asking because Neely never had a gun. Neely never had one at her home. She never had one in her car. I've never, you know, even seen Neely period around a gun. But, you know, if y'all do your research and go back through them shows, you'll notice somebody there on the show talking about, I got a gun. Yeah. Well, you know, everything's being looked at right now. But when she was caught in Kentucky, um, when she kidnapped her children, uh, the Secret Service was involved in that also. And it has been reported that she had a gun then, that when they took her into custody, she had a gun. Um, so, you know, I'm just really curious as that gun was taken from her, obviously. And it was illegal for her to obtain it or have it in her possession. 
So I'm just really curious as how she got her hands on a gun. So Brother, let me ask you this. I got a question because, and this is, I assumed, and I, and I shouldn't have, but I've assumed that Neely was living in Kentucky because she had a bond, you know, and she may have been now on a possible uh, bond conditions to not leave the state. But where was she actually staying? You know, obviously she was at a motel the, before this happened this weekend, but where did she actually live, the, you know, primarily? Uh, Pensacola, there were Robert on the base. Okay, okay. Yeah, because here's the thing. You know how it is is people tell you one thing, and they're, they're like, no, uh, they had to sell their house down there, and they had to move back to Kentucky because the bond restrictions meant that she had to stay there. And I'm thinking, okay, but I don't see that. And, and that's what we were being told. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, it doesn't make any sense if she was there. So she was in Pensacola, but went and rented a hotel or whatever, and then went over to, to visit Hallett. But you had no indication she was mad or going to do anything like this. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, she was, you know, pretty happy. You know, every time she called me, she's no fine. You know, um can I ask you, why do you think she did it? Yeah, if she did, um, she yeah. might not have, she might not have done it. I mean, we don't know she did it. There's no eyewitness seeing her fire around. But if she did it, why do you think? I know they got a lot of speculation out there on that, but why do you really think? I can't give an answer on that. I can't either. I mean, she said because you were, she was, he was going to take her kids and this that and the other he didn't he didn't deserve to die i mean he did create a lot of this nightmare and you know they dangled a lot of shiny things out there for her over the years but here's an here's another one and i'll let the rest of them ask you the question what can we do to help you i don't know why but i would like to help you um even if it's in a situation with a case we got lawyers on here we got gals we got we have a lot of resources. We don't have a lot of money, but we have a lot of people that, for whatever weird reason, they call us friend, and they can look over things or help you with things. And don't even answer that on here. You've got my messenger, mm -hmm. and and I'm gonna let the rest of them ask you whatever they got to ask you here if you're still good with that. But anytime you need something, brother, and I mean this 100%, you call me, and I won't I won't drop the ball. I can't guarantee you I'll always be early. I'll probably be late. But I will do what I say. I, it, it just may take me a little bit of time to get back to you. But I appreciate you very much for being on here. And I'm, I'm going to hand it over to them and let them ask some questions, if you don't mind. And thank yes. you. Yes, I just wanted to ask you um, if you felt there was a good relationship with Chris and Neely. Obviously, something happened. And she's a, very upset with him that would cause her to do what she did. And there's two eyewitnesses in Florida that's saying that she's the one that did it. Um, what, what do you think happened? Once again, I have no idea at all. I was shocked more than anybody. Yeah. Okay. Has she ever question Chris Hallett's motives in the past? I've never that heard. That he was working against her? Yeah, I've never heard her say anything bad about Chris. Yeah, see, said, that's, that's what's got us, fa uh, you know, flabbergasted. That's what I'm baffled about, Maria, is how that it's come out that she, according to the witnesses' statements, that um, something has happened that she felt that Chris was involved in not getting her children back in Kentucky. So that's what I'm really bad. Yeah, that doesn't about. make, it doesn't make sense based on right. her dedication to E. Claus and Chris. Yeah, it, right. it don't make, it don't make any sense at all. No sense. <laughs> I can't even wrap my head around it. It doesn't even make no sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your honesty and coming on the show and talking about this. And like Randy said, um, if you're having some sort of a, a, a problem, we do have resources that can, you know, 
help out a little bit or guide you in the right kind of help that you can get uh, legally. Um, and I, I really appreciate you answering our questions this evening. Thank you very much. No, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Yes, I, I, uh, I do appreciate it. I'm not an advocate. I just do the support work. <laughs> so, hey, Maria, the only thing I have to add, we're just trying to make a little bit of sense, but go ahead, Karen, if you have any questions. The only thing I have to add is to caution everyone that this is certainly an active law enforcement investigation and everything else at this point is just pure speculation. Yes. Right. Except for what is in the affidavit by law enforcement. And so to that tune, you know, we could speculate, 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 but I think the point is, is that this ended bad. And in 2018, when mm -hmm. I came in contact with this on social media, my words to everyone was, this is not going to end well. Eventually something will happen other than people going to jail for doing the things that these people are telling them to do. So I just want to caution everybody that if you think that listening and getting your legal advice off of social media is going to help you in any way, please understand it's not. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah, and let me just say this, brother, because I want you to know there's a lady out here. Her name is Elizabeth Byler. And we also met her, ironically, at the Nancy Schaefer event down in Georgia. But um, Elizabeth was also, and I'm just going to say this, she fell into what Hallett did. She fell into what Hallett did, and Hallett destroyed her case. Now, we helped her after the fact so that there's a family thing so that she can be around her kids, and she's progressing, and the family was really good. But how it filed as though he was an attorney and he could file in there and he uses a fake bar number. I mean, this is a, these are facts. I can't make that up. You can call me out and we, we, we are going to produce them in just a minute. 